what can I say about matzah? <laughs> it's a salt-free cracker. So you can guess how I feel about that. I mean, in terms of symbolism, it's great. It's the symbol of the liberation from slavery. Even for someone like me, freedom is indeed more important than salt, especially given the times we live in. But I believe that we can make freedom taste better. <laughs> Although matzah by itself is a little underwhelming, things made out of matzah can be quite delicious. And today we are making the matzah dish of my childhood. My grandmother called it prezhenitsa. For years, when I heard American Jews talk about matzo brai, I thought that's what they were talking about. But after I googled for matzo brai recipes, what I got was more like scrambled eggs with matzah. And prezhenitsa is more like a Spanish tortilla, but with matzah instead of potatoes. It's kind of like a savory cake that you can slice. Let's start with the onions, because that's the most delicious part of this dish. Dice one or two yellow onions, depending on their size. Mine are kind of small today, so I'm doing two. This is a very rustic dish, so there is no need for pieces to be tiny or perfectly even. If you want, you can slice the onions instead of dicing them. Set a 10-inch skillet over medium heat and add 2 tablespoons of butter and 2 tablespoons of olive oil. If you want the dish to contain no dairy, you can go with all oil. Add the onions, a generous pinch of salt, and cook stirring occasionally. Regulate the heat so that the onions brown very slowly, giving them a chance to become completely translucent and tender. This will take about 20 minutes. There is no need to stir them constantly. I've only stirred them five or six times during 20 minutes. Here is what they should look like when they are done. While the onions are cooking, take four squares of matzah and break them up. You want an average piece to look something like this. Cover with cold water and let it sit for five to 10 minutes. You want the pieces to get almost pliable, but not completely soggy. Drain the matzah in a colander and squeeze with your hands to remove excess water. Wipe out the bowl in which you soak the matzah and break three eggs into it. I know it looks like two eggs, but that's because I misjudged and ended up adding another egg later. Beat the eggs very thoroughly. Add the matzah, a generous pinch of salt, and some black pepper. Mix it all up. I wanted a wetter mix, so I added one more egg. This is how I used to cook before I started teaching 20 years ago. It was a little of this and a little of that. With some dishes, it works just fine. I added a tiny bit of pomegranate molasses and parsley, but that's completely optional. Let's add our beautiful onions and give it all a mix. Don't forget to taste for salt. The raw eggs don't bother me, but if you're worried, cook a tiny piece in a microwave or a pan. Set an 8-inch non-stick pan of a medium heat. Add about a tablespoon of olive oil and wait for it to get hot. Dump the matzo mix into the pan and flatten it out. Smooth out the top and tuck everything in around the sides. Cover and brown slowly on moderate heat to allow the inside to cook through. You should hear a steady but gentle sizzle coming from your pan, like this. It should take about 7 minutes to brown the first side. Let's check if it's brown. Almost! Let's give it another couple of minutes. This looks better. There are so many ways to flip this. Normally, you flip onto a flat lid or a plate and then slide it back into the pan. It's really not that hard. If you want to see that method, I'll link to my tortilla de patatas video below. But if you want the easiest possible way to flip it, preheat a 10-inch nonstick skillet, dot your prezhenitsa with butter or drizzle with a little olive oil, and dump it into a 10-inch skillet. I promise it's not scary. You just let it fall out of one pan and into another. 
The reason I didn't put any oil into the 10-inch pan is to prevent it from splattering me during the dump. Brown the second side without covering the pan. The same principle applies with the heat. You want the second side to take at least 5 minutes to brown to allow the center to finish cooking. You can certainly just wing it with doneness. If it feels firm, it's probably done. But you can also check it with a thermometer to make sure you are reading 170 Fahrenheit in the center. Slide it onto a plate, cool for 5 minutes, and serve. Like any pancake, this one needs to be served hot. It makes a great accompaniment to any stew or other saucy dish. Here, let me break it apart for you to see the texture. It has a fabulous crust on the outside and a tender, slightly chewy inside. Happy Passover to everyone who celebrates and if you have a matzo dish that's near and dear to your heart, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Here are more culinary tutorials for you to check out and if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.